you're effectively pushing low-income renters not only into poverty, but potentially into homelessness. Around 4 million people experience destitution in the UK, almost double what it was five years ago. Okay, so we're in a bit of a weird situation where inflation is back in the target range of 2%. So things are not getting expensive as quickly as they were, except for the cost of renting. Across England, rents have gone up by 8.7%. And in London, it's 9.7%. You're an economist. What on earth is going on? So absolutely right that general inflation has come down back within target range, which is really, really good news. We've needed this for a long time now. Um, and as you said, things aren't getting as expensive as quickly, which is good. Um, but it doesn't mean that prices are coming down. On the flip side of that, rents are still staying really, really stubbornly at high levels. So like you say, across England, almost 9%. In London, they've only just come down from being in double digits in the last few months. And these are really record levels of rent inflation across the country. Um, now, why are we seeing all of that? Uh, we're seeing it because there is a big issue of a supply and demand imbalance um, across the country. Um, we're also seeing big changes in terms of what some landlords need to receive so that they can actually meet their new mortgage costs if they've had to remortgage because they're fixed. But that's not all landlords. We know that not everyone has a mortgage. We also know that there has been some changes uh, to regulations in terms of like what landlords need to provide for tenants um, to make sure the quality of the homes is good or that that is coming up in the next few years, some of which may also be contributing to higher rental costs being asked for. But to be honest, a lot of it is also just because they know that they can get it on the market. So if you're seeing uh, that rents in your local areas have gone up and even if your costs haven't personally gone up that much you might say oh i can also get that for my property again not all landlords but definitely a lot of them will be looking at the market like that hashtag not all landlords but at the end of the day we can break down the economics of this when your rent goes up it has gone up because your landlord for whatever reason has decided to put it up Exactly. So the factors that feed into this will be complex, but the bottom line is that landlords are increasing rents. That's absolutely correct. Um, and we're definitely not seeing any areas that I'm aware of across the country that have seen a sustained fall in rents recently. Um, what I have seen of late is some people saying, oh, it's because local housing allowance has increased. Um, and that's absolutely right. Housing, local housing allowance was unfrozen for the first time in four years, uh, back in April this year. That would have hit uh, beneficiaries' pockets in May or June this year. And quite frankly, that's not the right answer for why rents have been going up before Just that. for anybody who doesn't know, the local housing allowance is the calculation that decides how much state support a low-income private renter can get to pay their rent from the government. That had been frozen at 2019, 2020 levels for years and rents had been growing. So low income renters were struggling to pay. When Jeremy Hunt was the chancellor, the government decided to increase that. But by the time they increased it, rents were already still growing beyond the increase. We're in a bit of a situation <laughs> where the government actually has to make some very difficult choices because we can keep increasing the local housing allowance, but rents may well keep rising because, as you said quite rightly, there's a shortage of homes to go around. But by not increasing it, you're effectively pushing low income renters not only into poverty, but potentially into homelessness. Absolutely. And I think what we've seen is that rising rents, rising levels of lower income households having to rely on the private rental sector rather than being in social housing has also been a cause of rising destitution across the UK as well. We know that last year around 4 million people experienced destitution in the UK. That's you know, almost double what it was five years ago. That's simply unacceptable. We know that there are record numbers of people and children currently in temporary accommodation across the UK, 
also completely unacceptable. And all of the reasons for why that is happening is a combination of a housing crisis where there aren't enough social homes, where too many people are forced into the private rental sector, where their income just doesn't cover rent and it's completely unfit for purpose, and the rising cost of living across everything else, across energy, across transport, across food, is literally pushing people out from being able to afford their essentials. We're talking about rent inflation at around 9% across the country. That is so far above the overall rate of inflation. Now, if I need a new pair of running trainers because I've worn my current pair out and I go to several shops and I see that all of the running trainers are 150 quid and I can't afford those, I just won't buy them this month, I'll wait, use the old ones. But with a home, if I need to rent somewhere and I have a month left in the property that I'm in because I'm being evicted, and I'm out there trying to find somewhere else to live and I can't quite afford any of the places I'm seeing, they're not in my budget, I might cut other things to pay because I have to have somewhere to live. I can't delay that decision. Is it fair to say that rents don't quite function like other consumer goods? I would say absolutely yes, so, or no, they don't function like other consumer goods. So when we talk about whether or not housing is affordable, affordable to who is a really good question. Um, a broadly agreed definition of affordability is that you shouldn't be spending more than 30% of your income on rent, but that's particularly so if you're on a low income, it matters a lot more. If you are on a, an income of 200,000 pounds a year, it's gonna be a little bit different if you're spending 30% of that on your housing compared to if you're on an income of 30,000 pounds a year. Um, but what we also know is really, really upsetting is that around a fifth of low income renters say that they currently hold a loan that they originally took out to help pay for their rent. So people are taking on additional borrowing, paying interest on it in order to pay their rent. We know that people are foregoing food. We know that people are cutting down on their pension contributions. They're, taking, they're not taking out insurance anymore. They're taking very long-term financial decisions that might harm their financial stability in the future in order to be able to prioritize those short-term costs right now, like rent, like energy, because they are taking up so much of their budget. Do you think this is the peak of rent inflation? I hope this is the peak of rent inflation. Being completely honest, I don't know if it is. I think we're still yet to see a lot of the pass through from some of the landlords who have still got mortgages who um, and who may have been on, on lower rates and that's yet to come through. I think we probably still have a little bit of the impact of the higher increase to housing benefits to pass through. I don't think we've seen the full impact of that yet. I don't think that that's gonna have a huge impact on rent inflation because it is at the lower end of the market. And in the scheme of things, it's actually not that much more per month when compared to other renters as well. Like we've said, it's really, really challenging when you've got a market where the renter has to pay the rent regardless um, of what is happening. And when you've got a market where you're allowed to bid um, above the asking price for rentals um, and you're just seeing it going up and up and up and up and you're, you know, you're up against others on higher incomes and so on, that's gonna be really challenging and all of that does lead to rental inflation. Um, it'll be interesting, I think, to see the last few months, we've definitely seen that rents have stabilised, but at that higher level of rent inflation. So even if we start to see those figures coming down, as we've talked about with inflation in general recently, it doesn't mean that rents are getting cheaper. It means that they're increasing at a slower rate than so before. This is a really key point. Even if we are at the peak of rent inflation and it comes down from 9%, which it may well eventually do, but it could, as you say, still go up, that doesn't mean that rents will come down from the level that they're at, which are historic highs. Every time I look at the data, it's like new historic high for rents. We are breaking records in all the wrong ways. It's gonna take a really long time for wage increases to catch up with where rents will now be. So what should the government do? So in the long term, the government has to invest more in social housing. I think we've already seen some really promising signs from the new government on how they want to do that and some ambitious plans. And I think that's really great because a massive part of building the social housing that we need is the political will. Um, and so that is the first step to doing it. The second is investing and making sure the planning system and our uh, construction sector is ready for it. So really great to see that that's starting. We have to continue that basically with gusto because that has to be one of the biggest priorities for the country in the next few years is kickstarting a proper social housing program that actually leads to a 
far, far bigger number of social homes being built every year. Um, we also need to make sure that the Renters' Rights Bill, previously the Renters' Reform Bill, actually ensures that no-fault evictions are properly embedded in our private rental sector. So at the moment, and you've talked about this a lot, Becky, you can be evicted for no reason at all uh, from your home. The Renters' Reform Bill looked to, to change that, but it missed out some really important ways that landlords could still do that kind of behind a back door, if you will. So if you put the rent up to a high level and the renter can't pay it, you're, effecti you're effectively gone. Um, so what we I think we need to see in a renters' rights bill is actually something that addresses that. We have to make sure that people can stay in their homes as long as possible and have that actual level of security of knowing what your rent is going to be like, what that might look like, for that to be genuinely affordable for you. Because if you get evicted, homes are much, much more expensive to find if you're looking again. And it's so much better for your financial stability and also because a home is a foundation, right? It, it, it is everything. So instead of having to uproot your children from their school and have, instead of having to look for homes in cheaper areas, changing jobs, everything, it means that you can stay in your home. And that would be the right thing to do right now.